today we're, we're going to go ahead and do communion. And uh, uh, communion is part of, uh, you know, Christ instituted it on the night Passover before he was taken, um, put on trial, crucified. And it's representing, as he says in, in his word, uh, his body that he's giving, his blood that he's shedding, uh, that we might be saved. It, uh, the perfect salvation, no salvation could be imagined by a man that would be greater than for God himself to come to earth divest himself of all his glory, of all the wonders that are in heaven, to set aside all of that, to walk among man, not as the most handsome, not as the strongest, not as the tallest, but as an average man he walked. In appearance, in stature, but holiness he walked, in perfection. He felt the pains of man. He felt the struggles of man. He labored. He died a gruesome death. Never though did he fail. Never though did he sin. Perfectly doing the will of the Father. And that's what we're remembering. That He did this for us. He did this for us. All of mankind together could not imagine a greater miracle, a greater sacrifice than to God, for God to humble Himself so much just to bring about our salvation. Those of us all well, there, having well, sinned and come short of His glory, <laughs> not deserving the salvation, not able to earn, not able to pay back. Given eternity, we cannot pay Him back for the salvation that He bought us on Calvary. And that's what we're remembering. As He told Paul, My grace is sufficient for thee. If He does nothing else than save you during this life, save you from sin, save you from... Uh, <clears throat> Missing out on heaven, that's more than we deserve. Amen. All of your troubles combined mean nothing. Amen. May we stand together as we uh, take this communion. And uh, I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 26, verse 26. God worked it out really easy. Matthew 26, 26. You should be able to remember that. If you ever want to look this up. And, they, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body. Let's bless this bread in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you sent Jesus to come to earth, to give his body, to, to walk among man, to uh, just take on the, the pains and suffering of man, and to show us your love and bring about our salvation. We just ask you to just bless this small piece of bread, Lord God, and bless us. In, in, in love and in mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Take the bread. And then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Let's bless this, this cup. Heavenly Father, this cup represents the blood of Jesus Christ that washes us white as snow, that cleanses the temple, the that you have made us, that you could enter in, yes. that we could be in your presence, undeserving, yes. undeserving, we can be in your great holiness and your great presence. We just give you praise and glory today as we remember this as a body. In Jesus' name, amen. You may take the juice. And you may be seated. <laughs> Communion uh, means nothing if you do not have a desire to please God for what He's done for you. It is an opportunity for us as a body together to, to remember in unity. But, you should remember every day. Amen? Every day, giving thanks to Jesus. 
Every day giving thanks to God. Every day giving thanks for His miracle of salvation and all His many blessings. Amen. So, today I want to start off in probably one of the most famous psalms there is. I mean, really simple. We'll go to the most famous one. 23rd Psalms. That's right. Psalms 23. Let's go ahead and read that. I'll read the whole thing, but I want to focus on one little piece of it today. But let's go ahead and read the whole thing in its context. And, it's, and it says, The Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. One of the most famous songs that was ever written. Very famous words. I think a preacher could preach a year on this verse alone. So we're just going to take one little piece of this. Psalms 23, and I want to look at verse 3. He restores my soul. Don't get excited, that's not it. <laughs> I said it with emphasis, but really it's the next part. He restores my soul. So many other things, right? And then he says, He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. For His name's sake. That sounds pretty selfish, doesn't it? <laughs> for His name's sake. He leads us in the paths of righteousness. He leads us down the path of doing right, of doing good, of walking in holiness, of walking in obedience. He leads us down that path for what? For His name's sake. Yes. Have you ever really thought about it? He wants you to do good. He leads you. Down these paths for His name's sake. The wonderful thing about it is we get so many benefits. First of all, when you're walking down His path, His path of righteousness, His path of holiness, His path of goodness, the path that is obedience, that's a good thing. When you are walking down the path that He has established for you specifically, that is when you're going to be the most happiest. That's when you're going to be the most at peace. Oh, you're still going to have troubles. Because you know later on He talks about the valley of the shadow of death and all this stuff and the enemies and all these things. You notice it doesn't say there will be no valley of shadows. There will be no enemies. It doesn't say that. But the path will take you through those things. And it is a path of righteousness. The path of righteousness is not always smooth and simple. But it's a path specifically made for you. Because you are unique in His plan. He didn't run out of ideas on how to make humans by the time He got to us. <laughs> I'm out of ideas. I'm going to have to just duplicate things. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Remember that donkey? That's what I'm going to make Jeff like. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't run out of ideas. I may be similar to a donkey, but I'm a unique donkey man. <laughs> he has a path of righteousness that he's established for each of us. And he's done it for his name's sake. But another beautiful part about that statement is when you look at it, if I was to say, I'm doing it for myself, I'm doing it for my own self, that's selfish, right? If I use those words, I'm going to go bake a cake for myself, that's selfish. I'm going to go shopping for myself, that's selfish. 
right? I'm going to go buy a new car for myself. That's all about me. And God says, don't, don't be selfish, Jeff. Be a giving donkey. <laughs> don't be selfish. You see, when we say it like this about ourselves, we know it's selfish. Now, I'm not saying don't get a new car, don't go shopping, any of those things. You know, uh, that's fine. The point is, though, when God says, for my name's sake, there is no better place for us to be than where He wants us to be. Right. So this, and then you add to it, He is holy and just, will never forsake us. His, His promises are true regardless of the day, the time, the year, the century. His promises are true. The same promises that Abraham stood on, we stand on. The same promises the disciples fell in line with, we are in line with. All that is true. The Word of God is true 100%. He loves us totally. Even though we don't deserve it, that's why we're here. Right. He blesses us daily. He even blesses us when we were sinners. He blesses those that, are, that, that never will accept Him. He blesses them daily. Why? When He says, for His righteousness' sake, his righteousness can only be holy. His righteousness can only be good. His righteousness can only be pure. I might do something for myself that may cause others harm. I, you may do something for yourself that may cause others harm. Don't you know throughout the centuries, kings and priests and elders and judges did things for themselves that caused others harm. We see it in Scripture. We know it from history. But when God does something for Himself, it blesses everyone. <clears throat> because He can't do anything that's not good and holy and righteous and true. He can't do anything that will unjustly cause harm to you or me. He can't do anything or enact anything that is selfish to the point of it does the earth and this universe harm without a holy cause. <clears throat> when it's for His name's sake, it's pure, it's holy, it's good. And it means everything's right. That's another way of saying He loves us. And the things He has for us are good. When it's His name's sake, it's holy. And what's holy is good for you. Amen. What's holy is good for me. It's righteous. What's righteous directs us and guides us to where we need to be. It's good. For His name's sake, it's good. I like good things. It's good. I, see, God can use terms on Himself that I don't have the right to. I can't be selfish. Why? Because everything I have is His. I don't have the right to be selfish because there is nothing that is my own that God did not give me. I can't be selfish for my finances. I can't be selfish for my time. I can't... If I do it... If I am so selfish with these things... I cause others harm. It's not mine. Your money is not yours to give. God just gave it to you so you'd give some of it back. Your time is not yours to give. He just allows you to have it so you can use it for His will. The skills you have are yours because God gave them to you and He has a plan for you to use them. See, I can't use words like for my sake without being laced with sin. Without being laced with selfishness. Now, uh, again, uh, Jesus t taught us a valuable lesson in His ministry. And He took time for Himself to go rest. To get away from the crowd. So, re so, so God understands vacations. He understands days off. He doesn't expect you to forego sleep in order that you might 
preach his word 24-7 until you die. He made us human. He knows our limitations. He, he, he's intimately knowledgeable of the fact that we have to work, make a living. If all Christians had the idea that they could go out on the ministry field and never work, Who'd be paying us tithes if we could make a living? We didn't have any food. We'd all starve to death preaching to each other. <laughs> Some people are called to be 100% in the ministry. And, 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 and the body of Christ does. But it's a tough job. If you're doing it right, it's a tough job. But people have to make a living. So... I'm not speaking against these types of things when I say this, but uh, it's easy for us to slip into that selfishness. All for my sake. We see, God never does. God never... He can make this statement that He leads us in the path of righteousness for His name's sake because His sake is good and it's holy and it's true always. He doesn't have to take anything or cause any harm to us for him to be good, for him to be better, for him to be. Right. It just he just is. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to Psalms chapter 106. I'm going to start at verse six of Psalms 106. It says, "Both we and our fathers have sinned." <clears throat> now we all fall into this, right? We've all sinned. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedness. We have all committed a, a wickedness and iniquity. We're all, we are all sinners that are saved by Christ. Yes. So we can relate to this scripture so far, right? And it goes on, Our fathers, when they were in Egypt, did not consider your wondrous works. Now, he is talking about the Israelites and how they were in Egypt. Captive. 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 <coughs> And in their captivity, they lost sight of who God was. Because they made the assumption that God was not with them because they were in a place they didn't like. Just because you're in a place you don't like doesn't mean God's not with you. Doesn't mean God doesn't have a plan. Doesn't mean He doesn't have a path of righteousness for you to follow. So the Israelites were captive in Egypt. They lost sight of who God was. They began to doubt Him because, why? Because He didn't show them every day with a neon light that He was wonderful. That's what we want as Christians, right? We want a neon light that tells us how wonderful God is and He's really there. Well, that points up, yes, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> then we would all be confident He was there. Yeah. Well, they didn't get the neon light. They did not remember the abundance of your steadfast love. We forget His love even though we can't live a day without it. When we were unsaved, we could not live a day without His love. Because all of His goodness flows from that love He has for us. All of His righteousness, is, it's part of that love. It, it, it's a package. You can't diminish any of who God is and still have our holy, eternal God. But rebelled by the sea at the Red Sea, Yet He saved them. He saved them from the Egyptians. He saved them from their captivity. He saved them from the enemy. He saved them at the Red Sea for His name's sake. You see, there is no better reason for anything to be done in heaven or earth than for God's name's sake. You might have important reasons why you've got to do something, but there's no more important reason than for His name's sake. There is no greater motivation for anything to be done in your life or any life that has ever been lived except for His name's sake. These are the kind of words that are in Scripture that have such depth and such meaning. And we can put them in our minds and we can think about these words for the rest of our Christian walk. 
the rest of our Christian life, if you live to be 120, you could still be thinking about these words and not fully grasp the depth of that meaning. And yet it's a part of Scripture. So it's easily overlooked. Why? Because there's so many mysteries in the Word of God. There's so many wondrous mysteries in the Word of God. We can't learn them all in this lifetime. And we will never stop learning about God in heaven either. I don't care how long you're in heaven. We're not going to get to some billion, billion years and say, you know what? It's kind of boring now because we don't know anything about it. Yeah. Right? We kind of got it. Don't you guys agree? Yeah. It's going to be kind of boring here because we kind of know all everything. You ever thought about it? I mean, you know? It's like, it's not going to be like kindergarten where you get to color pictures for eternity and you kind of get bored because you only got like 64 colors. I mean, it's, it's not going to be that way, right? Right. Kids never have enough colors, right? Well, you're not going to run out of crayons in heaven. Don't worry, they don't break up there either. <laughs> and I hear they taste like Aww. chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> Instead of that waxy flavor they have oh, now. Yeah. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go eat one. <laughs> <laughs> you see, there's just no greater purpose or reason to do anything in your life than for His name's sake. That's why Jesus taught us. That's why the New Testament teaches us what it does about whatever you do, do it for Christ. <clears throat> because there's no greater reason to do anything than for His name's sake. My wife wanted me to mow the lawn this week. Uh -oh. I didn't want to mow the lawn. I'll be honest. I'm not a yard guy. Right. My perfect yard would be pavement. <laughs> they like park green. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Grass is for all my other neighbors to have. Me, I'm like concrete. Yeah. Pavement. None of them, no cracks. You know, cracks, the weeds grow up the cracks, no cracks. Yeah. No cracks. <clears throat> That's the perfect lawn. But my wife wanted me to mow the lawn. She won't let me pave it. <laughs> I mean that song about paving, you know, the parking lot. Man, it's my dream house. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> we do things in our lives for various reasons. I right. mowed the lawn because my wife wanted it to look nice. Right. I even weeded it. Yeah. Wow, I know I was really stepping up. And, uh, you know, we, we go to work, we, we wash clothes, we do all these things because yeah. it's part of life. Yeah. But it pleases God when we do those things in a joyous way. Because our joy is in Him. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. I don't mow the lawn because I get joy out of it. But pleasing God brings joy. If I do it in His name's sake, like Jesus said, whatever you do, do it as I'm to God. There's no better reason to do it than for His name's sake. Now, well, back when I was growing up, you could still wall up your kids whenever you want. You know. Uh, I, I can just imagine back then, I'm walloping you for God's name's sake. <laughs> 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 you better make sure you're doing what you better make sure you're doing. Saying it's for God's name's sake doesn't make it okay right. if it's wrong, yeah. okay? Right. Because I never needed to be walloped. I was a good kid. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, moving on into 1 John chapter 2, verse 12. I don't know why you're laughing. This is serious. I am writing to you, little children. And he called John calls us little children. He's he he was yes. he died of old age. The only the only the apostle that that, that lived disciple that lived to old age and died. All the others were martyred. And so he, he lived to be quite old. And so he had the right to refer to those around him as little children. I am writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven. Why are your sins forgiven? For his name's sake. 
you are forgiven for Him. Because if you are only forgiven for you, you're not worth it. I'm not worth it. I'm okay with that. Because He saved me for His name's sake, and His name is worth it. Jeff is not worth salvation. You are not worth salvation. Doing it in His name's sake, though. What a beautiful thing. I'm saved to bring glory to God. That's why you're saved. To bring glory to God. That's why He's picked you up out of that miry clay. Yes. And He's working on you, reshaping you, taking those those sores, those spiritual pains and sufferings that we have, healing them to be beautiful scars of testimony. And He's doing it for His name's sake. But guess what? It's because He loves you. Yes. That's why it's for His name's sake. Because it pleases Him to love us though we don't deserve it. Because He is wonderful and holy. He can't help it. He loves us so much. that it's for His name's sake and we couldn't ask for anything greater. We couldn't ask for anything more wonderful. I'll take it. Because I'm not worth it. But He is. In Ezekiel chapter 20 verse uh, 41 we'll start at. As a pleasing aroma I will accept you. Now, my wife has complained about my aroma sometimes. <laughs> Even after mowing the lawn, she can complain about my aroma. It's her fault. I was out there. But she's complaining about my aroma. But see, God accepts us as a pleasing aroma. Why? Because He loves us. I mean, He has overlooked the sin in our lives. He has washed the sin away with the holy blood of Jesus Christ that we could be worthy to be in His presence for His name's sake, for our good and for His glory. When I bring you out from the peoples and gather you out of the countries where you have been scattered, God scattered the people of Israel. Why? Because of their sin. But He says, when I gather you together, He says, I will manifest my holiness among you in the sight of the nations. Goes to that New Testament scripture, we are ambassadors for Christ. God saves us from the pit of despair of sin, from our evil, from the unholy things we do, from the problems we cause, from the damage we cause, from the hurt we do. He saves us from this. For His name's sake. For His glory. And for our good. And it says in verse 42, And you shall know that I am the Lord when I bring you into the land of Israel, the country that I swore to give to your fathers. And there you shall remember your ways and all your deeds with which you have defiled yourselves and you shall loathe yourselves for all the evils that you have committed. Have we all done that? Looked at the... And loathed ourselves for the evil we've done. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing He saved us for His name's sake yes. and not our own. We have never been ready. And then in 44 it says, And you shall know that I am the Lord when I deal with you for my name's sake. Not according to our evil ways, nor according to our corrupt deeds and activities. But He made a way for salvation for His name's sake. Yes. He has saved you so that you could show His glory to the world. He has saved you so you could, you could, you could be a witness to His mercies. To His goodness. He saved you that you could just glorify Him to the nations.
And he's giving us that promised land, which is heaven, the eternity with him, which is the new heaven and the earth, new earth. That's what our promise is for. He's given us this. He's promised us this. It is as good as done. We just have to wait until the doors are open for his name's sake. For him. And we get to reap all the benefits. We'll read a couple more real quickly here. In um, it's back to Psalms chapter 31, verse 3. It says, For you are my rock and my fortress, and for your name's sake you lead me and guide me. He is the rock upon which we stand. He is the fortress in which we hide from the enemy, which protects us. And he leads us and guides us and does these things. Why? For his name's sake. And that's good because there's no better reason for anything to be done. Because you know what? His will never falters. His will is never wrong. His will is never weak. His word does not return to him void. It is true. It is honest. It is pure. It is eternal. And so when it's for his name's sake, and I reap the benefits, it's eternal. It's the most powerful thing there is. is the word and the will of God. It cannot be shaken. It cannot falter. So I'm happy to receive these blessings in His name. For His name. By His name. Because I don't deserve it. Psalms chapter 25. Verse 11, For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. For your name's sake, Lord. Because, you know what? I Have you ever, you've gone, God, will you do this for me? You know, because I'm trying to be a good person because I've given up that. I'm trying to go to church more. I'm praying more. So like, Can you do this for me? Because I'm doing all this. <laughs> You're not going to earn it. You can't pray enough to earn whatever you're asking for. Whatever blessing, whatever miracle you're asking for, you cannot earn it. You cannot pray enough. You cannot read Scripture enough. You cannot study enough. You cannot give enough money away. You can't spend enough time doing the work of God. You can't do anything enough to earn what you're asking for. Amen. You do these things because you love them. Because you know it's righteous and true and holy. That's why you do these things. And He blesses us in return for His name's sake. Yes. Never, never think that the blessings you've got are because you deserve them. Job was the most holy and righteous man on the planet. In the matter of 20 minutes, God took everything away from him. Read it. I, I, I just, I, I marvel at it and I love it. Before the one guy was done with his bad news, the other guy was coming in the door. Bam, 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 bam. His whole world fell apart in 20 minutes. And then he got sick and debilitated with pain and suffering. And guess what? God did not take anything from Job, who was the most righteous man on earth, that Job had earned. No matter, he was the most righteous man on earth and he did not earn those things. He did not deserve those blessings. He did not deserve that wealth. He did not reserve that strong, healthy family. He did not reserve, deserve the servants that served him. He did not deserve his camels, his flocks of sheep, his, his whatever. He did not deserve the homes and the buildings and the... Uh, he didn't deserve these things. We think we earn things. Because you have a job. I earned that car. You don't deserve it. Not spiritually. Not in God's sight. Job thought he... Job maybe and some thought he maybe deserved all this because he was such a great guy. But by the end of it, he knew. He knew. For sure. He never 
turn from God through all of that. Because he, he grasps that this is all blessings. I, I don't deserve the, the, the blessings. I got them, though, for his name's sake. Just like he went through the struggles and the trials and the pain and the suffering for his name's sake. For the glory of God and for his good. One more verse. And then I'll close, and I really mean it. <laughs> but I'm still going to get you out of here early. Joshua, chapter 7, verse 9. For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear of it and will surround us and cut off our name from the earth. Joshua's talking about how the Israelites are coming into the land and are going to take the promised land. And Joshua says to God, the word's going to get around, we're coming. <laughs> they know who we are. We've been wandering around in that desert for 40 years. A massive people without a home. They know we're coming and they know what we want. All these kings in this land are going to hear about us and they're going to all gang up and run us out. And then Joshua says, what will you do for your great name? What will God do in your life for His great name? What will God do in the lives of your loved ones for His great name? There is no limit. And there's no greater reason for anything than His great name. May we stand. Well, thank you all for coming this morning. And on this beautiful day, it's going to start getting hot now. Enjoy, enjoy the weather. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just give you all praise and glory and thankfulness for just the beauty that you surrounded us with, just the blessings that we've all uh, taken part in, Lord God. We just, just praise you for your righteousness and holiness, Lord God. And we give you all thanks, and we give you all praise, and we, we count everything except you as lost, Lord. And we, we just, uh, just ask, Lord, that you would continue to work in our lives for your glory and for our good, to bring about good things in us. Lord God, teach us, Lord, and help to guide us down your path of righteousness, Lord God, that we could... Uh, live at peace and, and harmony with your word and with your will. Lord God, for those that aren't here today, we just lift them up, Lord God, whether they be sick or traveling or, or, or such vacations, Lord God, we just lift them up that they would feel your presence, that they would open your word, that you, your Holy Spirit would minister to them in their absence, Lord God. We just ask for everybody's safekeeping this week as we go into the world to do our work, to do, uh, uh, to do your will and to do those things which are your good pleasure. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.